That's a good question. To be perfectly honest, I would probably wait until near the end of the elevator ride and say that I would love to come back and talk to her at greater length about this, this, this own problem that I have that you can help me solve. And so then I would get in and have a super long meeting with, with her where I can spill out all my guts as I just did. But had I say something now in the present, all of the people that I know who are worried about climate change have not just an intellectual attachment to nature, but an emotional attachment to nature, an emotional attachment to the, to, to the world. And the people with the intellectual attachment to nature seem to me to be those who want to exploit it because they understand how it works and perhaps they want to control it. But if, as I suspect, it's the emotions that drives the conservationist, the, the love of the aesthetics of nature and the experience of being in nature, the poetry that it produces, then the way that we fight climate change is to tell more stories, is to get people in touch with the, the heartfelt matters, uh, the, the, the heartfelt half of the, the scientific problem, which is that things will suffer and our children won't be able to walk on the beach or go to the North Pole or to watch polar bears in the same way that we were able to. And so the liberal arts then have a whole lot to offer. They have everything to offer because we're all about telling stories. We're all about remembering important things and keeping important conversations going. And science needs that. Science needs a science journalist. Science needs a narrator. And the liberal arts are necessary to be that narrative because we can be allies and work together. And the elevator ride has long since ended, but that, that's the fly the best I can do.